hi there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. Today we're going to continue the painting that we started yesterday. So if you missed yesterday's video, I would definitely check that one out. Uh, we started the linear block in with just charcoal and then went over the lines with burnt umber colored oil paint. So what we have on the palette here is just titanium white and raw umber. Both are Winsor and Newton brand. And for my painting medium, I'm going to be using Liquin. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be covering the, the big picture and we're going to look at the large shapes of light and dark. And we're gonna to try to cover most of the canvas with these colors today, with the underpainting. I don't think I'm gonna finish the underpainting today, uh, but I am going to work a little bit more quickly than I did with the last painting, just because this is such a large canvas. And so here we have an image of our model, Steve. And I'm gonna keep an image, I'm gonna keep a picture of Steve to the top left corner of your screen. Now bear in mind that the camera is going to have to be at an angle for the majority of the painting footage just because it's, it's gonna be impossible for me to paint with the camera right next to me. So just keep in mind that the perspective uh, with the uh, canvas is going to be a little bit different than the photo reference that you're gonna be seeing up there. And yes, this is a, a different palette than the one you saw me use. Last time, this is actually one of my oldest palettes that I, that I have. Um, it's pretty used up and rugged and I just, I feel like, I, I just like the way that it looks on camera. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the value scale. As you know, I like to start off with a value scale on my palette. And since this is a fairly large canvas, canvas, <laughs> since this is a fairly large palette and canvas, I guess, uh, we're going to have a pretty large uh, sized value scale on the palette. Hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit more clear. Hopefully you can see it with a little more clarity than the, the uh, smaller palette that I had. Not sure if I'm gonna use too many of these lights, but we're probably going to stick around this value family over here within the darker darks. And uh, yeah, for those of you that saw the video of how I toned this canvas, I did use this brush and um, a lot of folks were saying I should have had a larger brush to do it. And here you see me doing the same kind of thing again. But to be honest, I've had this brush for like, I don't even know, like two years. And this brush has, I've been using this brush for precisely this. Uh, covering extremely large areas. I have painted larger paintings before, just not really on my YouTube channel. So this is just the first time people are really seeing me uh, use this brush. So this, this brush is a Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle size 11 brush. And uh, again, no one's paying me to say anything positive or negative about the um, brushes, but this brush really takes a beating. Um, I've used this brush to tone pretty much all of my canvases. So I repeat, I've used this brush to tone pretty much all of my canvases. So um, yeah, this brush can really take quite a beating. That being said, I may end up using this brush for a lot of the clips today, so I guess I should uh, I should give a little formal, kind of formal introduction to this brush. And so again, I just want to have that that value that I was talking about, pretty much just one step above the darkest dark. And a nice thing about raw umber is that it doesn't get as dark as burnt umber and it's quite warm. Now Winsor and Newton's raw umber in particular is quite warm and I, I like it. It's warm but it's not as warm as uh, uh, Plaza brand raw umber. 
Plaza brand raw umber is the raw umber that I used to have. Um, it's just my preference. I just like this color, to be honest. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the rest of this shape and I'm gonna have to refill the raw umber on my palette. So let's go ahead and cover this little, it's a little dark shadow shape here. So there's a little bit of a dark shape over here. I think it's a shadow being casted by the globe, by the globe, but whether or not um, it needs to be there, I think for the underpainting, I'll just throw it in there. So now I guess the next logical shadow or dark shapes to look at would be along the lines of over here. And we're gonna use a different brush for that, a smaller one. This is a size six flat bristle brush. So we want something that's kind of close to this value that we had for the background, but just um, a little bit lighter. Let's try to get in that family of value range. Using quite a bit of paint. So nice consistency, almost like butter. If you put a, a thing of butter in the microwave for a couple seconds, that kind of consistency. A little bit more. And I'm gonna try to keep the brush strokes in a very diagonal fashion, meaning this way. Coincidentally, it's the main diagonal of this painting. By the way, uh, this stage of the painting, or I guess of the underpainting, is uh, also referred to as the poster image, or at least I'm going to refer to it as the poster image. And in the poster image, you're really trying to, uh, once you have your drawing in there, you really want to uh, put in a strong, a strong light effect, a strong differentiation between light and dark. So we're going to be using quite a bit of paint for this underpainting. So again, this is going to be a little different to um, the way that the way that we approached the last one. So with this underpainting, I'm going to do the best that I can uh, to cover the entire thing. Well, all of the dark shapes, at least today, I might leave these areas alone, but we'll see. Just trying to imagine the the shape of the boundary between the hair. That is the light and dark shapes for the hair. So I'm just kind of lightly applying the paint just to kind of, I don't know, soften that edge a little bit. And I think we're gonna get a little bit of a darker shape just for a little accent put right there. Yep. Just a little accent for where the hair meets the the back corner of the clothing. And I guess for the back of the ear.
All right, so I guess the next, the next little area of shadow, take a wild guess. Where are we gonna put another shadow there? So if this was the value for the, the hair, and this was the value for the background, the value for the shadow on the model's clothing for the light part of the model's clothing is going to be a couple steps lighter than this. So suppose this is one step. So suppose this is one step up. So I guess, eh, whatever. Let's just make that shadow this value right here. I don't want to go too light. It's a little bit safer to go darker with the shadows than lighter. So the shadow in question is this one right here. So that is fairly light, but I think that that should be all right for this value. I think uh, if I squint a little bit, yeah, it is a little bit darker than this. And this is definitely a fairly dark tone that we have for this uh, canvas. So I think this value should be good. Um, yeah, I did kind of skip the value study stage for this painting. I did do a value study for uh, the last uh, painting that I did on this YouTube channel, but... Uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to go, just jump right into this. Um, when I did the the portrait study, uh, I, I got a chance to paint some of the, the lighter shapes. Now, I'm sorry, again, that footage was uh, not very good, but I was able to observe these values up close and um, yeah, I, I do see that it's, it's pretty similar in the photo reference um, to what I'm actually observing in nature. So it's okay to make this shadow a little bit lighter. Now just simple abstract shapes of light and dark is the key. Now I am going to throw in some little darker accents just for, just for effect. So for instance, right here, there's going to be a darker accent just because one form is meeting another form. So that's making that shape darker. Same kind of thing is going to go on down here. It's going to get a little darker. And over here, and over here. One form meets another form, and so the intersection between the forms blocks off a little bit of light right there, and that's what creates the accent. And I guess there would be one here, to be honest. Didn't notice that at first. Now it makes a little more sense. So that is, this form is overlapping this form. Of course, since it is a fold in the model's clothing. You know, there's another shadow shape I didn't really draw. I must have missed this when I was drawing the, uh, the block in over here. So, uh, and I just ignore that for now. We'll come back to that later. I did miss this one and I also missed the uh, filming of this, my camera shut off. But anyway, so this is the same value that we had on the other side. Um, I did forget to draw it yesterday, so we're drawing it in now. Just a little simple shape of shadow. Very simple and easy. And now we're gonna go just about one step darker and we're gonna put in the the little shadow shape here for the beard. Now it doesn't have to be t too neat. Less is certainly more in this case.
and it's just one step darker than the uh, shadow for the, the shirt, for the light part of the shirt. And I think that that should be all right. Now the next little area we're gonna look at is this. So um, in terms of value, I actually see this as a little bit darker than the background. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit darker or group them together. Uh, we'll see. So we're gonna use just about the same value, I think, that we had for the background. A little bit more liquid. So yeah, we're gonna use just about the same value, if not just a tiny bit darker. Now there's already a little bit of uh, titanium white or a lot of titanium white still in this brush. So I can pretty much use quite, quite a bit of raw umber without the fear of it getting completely dark or too dark. And again, raw umber on its own does not get as dark as burnt umber or ivory black. So that's two extra shades of dark that we can still go after this layer dries. So no worries there. And you know what, just for added effect, I think I'm gonna get a different brush, a little bit of liquid, and just make sure that we can go darker. So um, kind of hard to tell there, but I think that we can get a little bit darker. So let's go ahead and fill in that dark shape now. So it can, I think it can get a little bit darker than the background, but uh, in the underpainting, it's usually, I think it's usually a better idea to group value families together sometimes when they're extremely close. So it's not such a bad thing if this value turns into the uh, value of the background. All right, so now let's test that idea whether the new, or should I say just a cleaner brush with the raw umber can, can get darker. And yes, it can get darker. This is good news. We can add yet another darker value. All right, so let's put that dark uh, right over here. Accent between one form and another leave a little bit of the tone of the canvas to show through here just because there is a lighter shape there and just continue to cover I really want that edge to be a little bit softer, so I'm gonna get the brush that I used for the, uh, the lighter tones, and I'm just going to soften that edge there. Just softening the edge, and I guess I'll make this little shape darker down here, just because this is the area, the bottom of the beard that's turning away from the light quite a bit. And now we're starting to see a little bit of form start to emerge. I'm gonna put this brush away, continue to cover, cover these shapes. And I'll tell you what, it's really nice to have the lines that we drew in yesterday be dry for this stage. I wouldn't advise, now I've done this before, but I wouldn't advise working over top of these lines if they were still wet. Losing those lines would be not the worst thing in the world. It would just um, cause a little minor setback. Let's go ahead and continue to fill this in. So now one form is gonna meet another form. So you tell me what happens. Yep, you got it. There's gonna be an accent between the two forms and it's going to create this darker shape and that's it and over here there's going to be a darker shape as well for the collar 
right about there. There's also going to be a little bit of a cast shadow from the beard. So there's going to be a little shadow here. It's very light, however. Yeah, just about like that. So I'm going to add a little more uh, raw umber to this brush. And we're going to continue to cover all the way down here. So I'm going to go ahead and group all of these these dark shapes here into just one unified dark shape. So I want to make sure not to lose this outline here. So I'm going to just make it a little bit darker, but you should still be able to see the line underneath um, after this layer that we're putting on dries. Now I'm going to get the brush with the lighter value and we're going to get a value that's um, a little bit similar to the shadow for the um, for the shirt but just a little bit darker so I guess I don't know, right around there and that value is going to be for this shape here the cast shadow or actually the form shadow, sorry, for the arm. And you know what, it's gonna get a little darker than that. So adding a little more, I'm gonna switch to the darkest dark brush because one form is overlapping another form. And now you tell me what's gonna happen. Yep, it's gonna be an accent, a little darker accent right there. The boundary of which one form, in which one form meets another. See, isn't this fun? Like the, the discovery of the, uh, the forms and the values and the shapes. Honestly, I love this stuff. Hope you do too. All right, so that shadow is going to go all the way over here until these forms start to emerge into the light. This is an area in question, um, I mapped it out anyway, uh, this little shape here for the hand. There could potentially be a tiny cast shadow there, but for now I'm just going to omit that and just leave my little uh, strange line here just to kind of uh, remind me that that could be a shadow. So let's just get a little more raw umber. Let's say around this value family. Very similar to the background. Add a little bit more liquid. And we're gonna use that value to cover the chair. This shape for the chair. And um, again, it's a darker value and I'm gonna just unify it with these darks and the trick is I should be able to see the uh, the outlines that we painted in yesterday through uh, this layer of paint meaning once I cover this I can still see the outlines from yesterday Now let's mix up a value very similar to the background value, but just a little bit lighter, but only a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add a little bit more paint into this mixture. And I think that ought to be about good. So this, this little area of value is, I'm actually relating it to this shape. So not the background, but to, to this shape. It's gonna be dark and I'm going to put this value right next to the uh, value that I'm comparing it to. And we're gonna notice that it's fairly dark, certainly darker than that, 
but it's not as dark as this, so this is actually the perfect value. Or maybe it is. I think I'm going to maybe make it a little bit darker. So first thing I'm going to do is put this shape back into here with this darker brush. All right, so I think that it potentially can get a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add a little more of the raw umber into that mixture. Let's try that again. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, that's the value that I want. So now I'm going to use this value to just cover the rest of this shadow shape for the, um, the shadow region of this fabric. So let's get a little more titanium white. And I'm gonna have to add some more raw umber. Let's just take what we have still there. Try to get the value that we want. So this, this is about the value that I'm after. So I'm gonna take that value and cover these lights. So let's just go ahead and put that lighter shape over here. It's not going to be too light, but it's going to get a little bit lighter. And while we still have this lighter shape, let's just go ahead and put in these little shapes that are lighter. Because why not? You know, I think it could get a little darker, this shadow over here. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit darker. Yeah, about there. So this value ought to do it. So as I'm putting down this value, I'm starting to, to realize that this value would actually work out pretty nicely. Let's test it. Yeah, it would actually work out pretty nicely with the rest of this background shape. So let's just recharge the brush with a little bit more paint in that uh, relative value family. So pretty dark, but just a little bit titanium white, just a little bit. Now this is gonna be similar to that background color that I added, I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but it's going to be just a touch lighter. So I think that ought to be about good. All right, so we're gonna take that shape and we're gonna use it for all of this area now. So I want it to be very similar. I want the value to be very similar to this, but a little bit lighter. So I think about there is good. Might be too similar to that, but oh well. I think it's good. Now what I'm gonna do is get the darker brush that we have in hand here and just cover this darker shape just so we can get the folds of the drapery fairly quickly. again to the dark brush. See how quickly we can move when we have these 
Bailey is already mixed up on the brush. All right, so I have a few more areas to cover around here, and I think that's going to be it for today. So just a few more things to cover and we'll be done. So I'm thinking the shadows for the books, um, I'm thinking that it's gonna be really similar to, I want, I'm thinking this value is gonna be similar to this value that we just painted in. So let's just make them similar. Just taking what was already on the brush and while we're putting in this darker value, there is going to be a cast shadow. So this is the form shadow on the book, and the book is resting on a surface. And so again, when one form is resting on the other form, yep, you know what's going to happen. It's going to be an accent right about here. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of a cast shadow, so I'm gonna to switch to the lighter brush. So just a little bit lighter than that value that we have for the book. We're gonna go and put this cast shadow onto the, the little table. And I think that I could potentially get a little bit lighter but I think we'll we'll focus on that maybe next time. Actually, I think next time we're going to work on the face. So anyway, today is, as you know, it's mostly about covering these large shapes. All right, so let's continue to fill in this value. Now, the, uh, the top plane of the book is going to be a little bit lighter, yet still darker. So with that in mind, let's do that. A little bit lighter, yet still, this has to be darker than that. Even darker. Yep, to about there. I don't want any details, just these large values. All right, so now the next area would be, I'm guessing this value for that book. Uh, I think it's a little bit lighter than this one. And again, no details, just a simple shape. Now we're gonna take the darker brush and fill in a flat shape for, so we're going to fill in a flat shape for the binoculars. No detail, we just want that large value. And it's almost going to look like the binoculars are going to disappear. And again, we're just trying to cover these large shapes of light and dark. And I think the binoculars are going to be a pretty much a, um, a staple, I think, to this overall composition, just because it's nicely overlapping the, uh, the globe. Now we're gonna use the other brush with the lighter, or sorry, with the darker values. We're gonna put in these dark shapes. And I think the last thing we'll do for today is just fill in a little flat shape here for the, uh, the little pipe. Just because I feel like it's, again, it's gonna be a really important part of the composition, just the contrast of this light and dark. There's a lot of nice uh, overlaps in this composition. So um, I think that this dark is gonna be a little bit a little important to indicate uh, very quickly. 
And again, I'm really, really enjoying this, um, this underpainting color. Again, this is Winsor and Newton's Raw Umber. Not even going to worry too much about the light and dark for the tobacco pipe. Maybe just a little brush stroke here and there. So one little mark there for the side. Maybe we'll put in a little darker shape there. Not terribly worried about trying to render anything yet. And just following along down there. Just a little light touch. And I think that's, that's going to be about it for that. Actually, one last thing, I promise, just one last thing for today. A little more titanium white. We're going to want a nice kind of even half tone that's going to be a little bit darker. Just a little bit darker than the tone of the canvas. And this will be just about the last thing that I'll do for today. And we're going to put in this form shadow for the globe. Very simple. And I just, I, uh, I feel like most of the large areas now have their shadow shapes indicated. So I'm guessing that the globe should have that shape indicated as well. And again, don't worry about the, the perfect circle or lack thereof perfect circle. We can always go back in and refine that circle. So I think to till just about there, let's get the other brush just to kind of soften that edge. Very simple. And I think that'll be about it for today. So in today's video, we really uh, wanted to push the differentiation between light and shadow and really bring out that light and dark effect. So that being said, I hope that today's video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And as always, I'm really trying to bring the experience of being in the studio creating uh, these works of art every single day. So that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow. And so just like yesterday, here is a view of the painting with the camera as close to front and center as I can possibly get it, trying to minimize the distortion. And like I said before, I can't really paint with the camera right in the middle just because I would block all of the footage and that wouldn't be good. The only distortion that I'm seeing, the major distortion is on the corner of this side of the canvas. But anyway, uh, here is a view of what the painting looks like after today. I'm sorry for the, the glare that's going on over there. So that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll be back again tomorrow.